Hi, till now we have studied about arrays which is basically a collection of elements and we had used example of storing the marks of various subjects and later on we have studied about the sorting and the searching algorithms. Now in this particular problem we will try to learn about the matrices right. Now let us try and an example wherein you want to store the marks of multiple subjects which you already done but now you need to store the marks of multiple subjects for multiple students. Assume there are 10 students and each student we need to store the marks of five different subjects. In that situation, how do you create an array? One way is for every student, you can create one one array. If there are 10 students, create 10 arrays wherein each array is of size five. Or the other way of doing that is by creating a multidimensional array, right? So we'll try to learn how do we create a multidimensional array? How do we initialize and how do we access the elements, right? Now, here we studied about how to create a simple array for storing five elements, right? Which was corresponding to five subjects of one student. But now when I said, for 10 students, the only thing what you should say is, you need to say, for 10 students, right, I want to store the marks of 5 subjects for each of the 10 students, right? So this basically creates a overall array of 50 elements, but it is in the form of a matrix. It has 10 rows and each row has 5 elements. Is this clear? So that is the difference between creating this and creating something like this, marks of 50. So when I say marks of 50, it will be like one stretch of 50 elements. But if I say 10 cross 5, it means there will be 10 rows and 5 columns. It will be more like a matrix, whatever you see in Excel format. Fine? Okay. Now, let us quickly try to verify what is the size of this. So if you want to know the size, as we know that we have to use this uh, size of operator, right, size of operator, pass on the marks, right, okay. Now as I said, it's an overall collection of 50 elements and each element is of type integer. What should be the size? 200 elements or 200, sorry, 200 bytes, clear, right. Now, and I said that it's an array of 10 elements wherein each element is an array of 5 elements, right. So if you want to see what is the size of first element, which is the first row in this particular case, first row consists of 5 integers. So 5 integers, the size is 20 bytes, clear, we understood this, okay. Now, the next thing is, how do I initialize, right? If you want to initialize, we use flower braces, okay? And for simplicity reason, I'll just try to take three students, not five, okay, or 10 students, right? Now, now when I said three, so three into five is 15 elements. If you want, you can actually initialize 15 elements one after the other like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is possible. But a better approach will be wherein the first row elements, you can use an additional fra braces, place the five elements. Then start the second row, right, place the five elements there. And start the third one, place five elements. Now let me tell you, both these statements work perfectly fine. There is no issue with respect to this. But the second one looks more in the form of how okay we want to see it, right, as a tabular column wise. Okay, it clearly tells you what is the elements which corresponds to first row, what are the elements which correspond to second row, what are the elements which corresponds to third row. Fine, I prefer this. Okay, now I'm just commenting this so that later on we'll try to verify. Okay, that is also works perfectly fine. Fine. Okay. Now, you can just compile it and you can observe that there is no error. Right. Now, once you have initialized it, 
The next thing what you need to know is how do I access the elements? So whenever you used to access the elements, we used to use index, right? So we used to use like for example, we used to write marks of zero. Now here marks of zero does not correspond to one individual element here. Marks of zero correspond to the entire first row. Marks of one correspond to the entire second row. Marks of two correspond to the entire third row. Right? But will it print all the elements of the first row? The answer is no. It prints the address of the first row. Right? Okay. Now, if you want to access an individual element in the first row, we have to use a second square bracket here. And in that you want to specify, you want to access the first element or second element or third or fourth or fifth. Now, let us say if I say 0 of 2, it will access first row, third element, right? What is the third element in the first row? It is 3. So, we can quickly verify this and observe that it is 3, right? Now, the same way if I just say this is 1, so it will be in second row, third element. Second or third element is 8, clear? Okay, now the same way if you want to say, third row right and then third or third element is 13 so this way whenever you want to access the element we need to specify the row index and the column index if you want to access the first element in the first row 0 of 0 right second element in the first row 0 of 1 clear right now we have tried accessing individual element and you can try out all the combinations and try verifies. The next thing is, I want to print all the elements. I just don't want to write several printf's. I want to print all the elements of this matrix on the screen, right? For that, we already seen how do we print the elements of each row. So for printing the elements of each row, we used to write a simple for loop and then we used to use a printf, right? But this is going to print Okay, one dimensional array or you can say one row of a matrix. It's going to print one row of a matrix. Right? But we need to print multiple rows or you can say all the rows of a matrix. For that, we just need to place this into another for loop. This one way to control number of rows. And this to control number of columns in each row. I hope this is clear. Right. Now, how many rows do we have? We have three rows. So I can just write i equal to 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. I'll comment this. Right. And each of the rows we know that there are how many columns? Five columns. j equal to 0, j is less than 5, j plus plus, right? Okay, the next thing is, now, as we know how uh, nested loops work, now for the first value, okay, i equal to 0, it checks i is less than 3, it is 0 less than 3, then it comes here, then it starts here, j equal to 0, 0 less than 5, so the first iteration out here will be like, i value is also 0, j is 0, then what happens, j value gets incremented j will be 1, i will be 0 itself. So it will generate like 0, 0, then 0, 1, and 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Then it will be like 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, right? So, okay, for better understanding, even before I could print the elements, I'd like to print the indexes which will be created. So once we know the indexes which, will, which are created, then we can easily learn how do we access the elements. Right, so I just like to run this and demonstrate the indexes 00, 01, 02, 03, 04. After that, we jump to the second row, value is 1, and then the column index is again 0 to 4. Again, next row, row number 2, right, then column number 0 to 4. So we have learned how do we generate the indexing of it. Once we have seen the how do we generate the index, which we want to get the element right you can just print the element like this if you want you can also print the index and the element side by side right so i just want to print the element so i need to use the marks of i of j right 
now this will print all the elements like one element in each line or if I try to remove this new line it will print all the elements of the same line I wanted more like a matrix format wherein I print the first row then jump to the second row print the second row then jump to the third row then print the third row so for that don't print a new line here because it's going to print new line after every element if you don't put a new line okay here and you don't do anything else and we have seen that everything prints in a single row but after printing of each row we want to print a new line so after the completion of this for loop before you start going to the next row just print a new line right I hope things are clear right okay so in this simple code we have learned how do I create a matrix how do I initialize it the different ways in which you can initialize it right and how do we access and since we already verified this what I like to do is I like to comment this part and then I'd like to enable this and I want to show you that even this works right so we can verify it once and you can just see this is working or if you want to change some elements and then let's say 12 or 22 32 or 42 something like this and then see that yeah it is actually working on the array what we created out here line number seven not with line from line number nine clear but this gives you more better view fine okay when you read the source code fine now there are some additional uh, benefits of using this method right so let us see what are the benefits assume that we are not considering that there are five subjects assume that there are four subjects for every student but I want five columns in the table the fifth column should be sum of all the elements so when I want sum of all the elements which I don't want to manually calculate and then initialize it I just want to initialize the marks and then leave out the fifth element right this one okay now in this case in the first row first four elements is whatever you have initialized the fifth element will be zero right so let's verify this right now if you had done exactly the same way in this one assume that you have just mentioned four elements after that you have not mentioned the fifth element then what happens this element will automatically become the fifth element of the first row rather than being the first element of the second row so for that we were supposed to explicitly put zero here right okay after this again this should be okay explicitly put zeros here right clear so okay I feel like this is uh, preferred way and this is the method which we need to follow whenever we work with matrices fine clear now in the next session we will be learning about uh, various operations on matrices fine thank you